Hello, and welcome to Boppy Approved Movies. My name is Boppy. And I'm Natalie. In our podcast, we will review and critique my favorite PG-13 movies. Movies that I wasn't allowed to watch until I turned 13. Every week, Natalie and I will watch a new PG-13 movie. And I'll see if Poppy's movies live up to the hype. Which, of course, they will. Today, we're going to be watching Batman. Before we begin, there will be spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie and don't want it to be spoiled, press pause and come back when you're finished. Now, Poppy, tell me the deets on this movie. Okay. Batman came out in 1989 with a runtime of two hours and six minutes. It's streaming on HBO Max. It was written by Sam Hamm and Warren Scarin. Stan Hamm. The movie is based on the comic book by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. It was directed by Tim Burton. The main stars are Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, and King Basinger. Fun facts, this franchise has three sequels, but only part one and two have Michael Keaton and Tim Burton. The other two movies are awful. Thankfully, Christopher Nolan rebooted Batman, and his trilogy rocks. So what do you think, Nat? Ah, I was bored. You were bored. Hmm, okay. I'm seeing a pattern here. Keep going. It was so boring and uninteresting. And I felt like the characters had, like, zero emotion. I felt like they were all, like, robots. And I felt like they were speaking off a script. Okay. Like, it felt, everything felt very robotic. Nothing felt, like, natural. It is a Batman movie. There's not much natural. And one of the characters is the Joker, right? You you, you do understand. He was the most natural of them all. The Joker was? Okay. (laughs) All right. Everyone else was robots. Everybody else was robots. So what do you rate it? I don't like it. Obviously. What did you rate it? A two and a half star. A what? A two and a half star. Two and a half stars. Okay. <laughs> Better than Mission Impossible. Yes. Oh my goodness. All right. I could see where... No, I don't get it. I don't understand how you thought this was boring at all. It's fast paced, but whatever. All right. You know what? I'm trying here. I'm trying, Natalie, to find movies that you're going to like, but I... Uh... I think we might be running out of PG-13 movies that you're going to like. I don't know. Maybe not. Hopefully not. There's still so many out there. So help me out here because it seems like my favorite movies are not entertaining my daughter. Please send us suggestions that maybe if you know Natalie, she at would our like. Email, at our email, poppyfreemovies at gmail.com. Yes, that maybe, maybe you have the solution to entertain my daughter because I obviously do not. Why don't we get into the recap? All right. The movie begins with the family getting lost down an alley in Gotham City. They are mugged and the Batman comes and attacks and terrorizes the burglars. That was confusing already because I thought that was Batman, the little kid. That was, yeah, that was kind of like a a bait and switch right there. They try to fool you, right? This is where he says his famous line in his famous scruffy voice, I'm Batman. And Nelly felt nothing about that. I got goosebumps, Natalie. He said I'm Batman. Yeah, but he said it's so cool. Whatever. From he what said I... it in his fake emo voice. Next, Gotham's mayor introduces Harvey Dent as a new district attorney. The mayor wants to have a huge parade to celebrate Gotham's 200th anniversary. He needs Dent to clean up the streets of crime, starting with mob boss Carl Grissom. So later on, you're going to find out Harvey Dent is Two-Face. But sadly, that Harvey Dent is played by a different person when... They actually have Two-Face come on screen, so a lot of people are really upset with Harvey Dent being recast, so that way it's another famous actor to play Two-Face. Maybe they did two actors because he has two faces. No, just a completely, it was another famous actor because he was going to have a bigger role. Uh, But then he could have become famous off of that bigger role. No, I know. Well, he was famous already. He was in Star Wars. He's... um, Billy D. Williams, he's Lando Clarissian in, in the Star Wars movie, so he's pretty famous. At the mugging site, Alexander Knox, a news reporter, asks police officer Lieutenant Eckhart about Batman. He blows him off denying that he exists. Then we see Eckhart talk to Jack Napier, Grissom's right-hand man, about what happened. Afterwards, Jack gives him a payoff. At the newspaper office, Knox meets Vicki Vale, a world-famous photographer. She wants to help Knox uncover the story of Batman. 
Their plan begins with talking to Commissioner Gordon at Bruce Wayne's mansion, where he is holding a fundraiser. I feel like they in this movie they give like no insight why he's Batman. He just is. Yeah, they didn't go into it. They just he was just the person. He's just he Batman. Is. Yeah, no origin story. It almost felt like he wasn't the main character though. It almost felt like Vicky Vale was like it was seen through her perspective more. Yeah, that's true. I can see that. Which is weird for a movie called Batman. What's well, really about Batman? I mean, like, I guess she's just the camera, but she's aiming the camera at Batman. So That's true. Grissom becomes worried about Dent's interference, so he makes a plan to destroy Axis Chemicals, one of his fronts. He specifically tasks Jack to do it. After Jack leaves, Grissom calls Eckhart and tells him to take Jack down. At the Wayne fundraiser, Knox and Vale get nothing from Commissioner Gordon, but they're fascinated with Bruce Wayne, especially Vicky Vale. Gordon leaves after he hears a tip that Eckhart is about to kill Jack Napier. Bruce Wayne hears it too through his surveillance cameras, and he leaves as well as Batman. Batman. Batman should make a podcast. He would make a good podcast? He would just be like, I'm Batman. All day to the microphone. And then he would just talk about Batman stuff. And then everyone would be like, why is his voice so deep and boring? Yeah. If I put people to sleep. Yeah. Maybe he does. uh, ASMR. Yeah, he does that and people just fall asleep listening to that podcast. At Axis Chemicals, Jack realizes it's a trap and a firefight ensues. Everyone converges. Eckhart with his men, Gordon with his men, Jack with his crew, and Batman. Jack gets the upper hand and kills Eckhart, and it's about to escape when Batman stops him. Jack shoots Batman, but the bullet ricochets and hits Jack's face, causing him to fall in a vat of toxic chemicals. Dun, dun, dun. There's your origin story. I guess this is an origin story of the Joker. Joker. Maybe this movie was more about the Joker than it was about Batman. But is there a movie called The Joker, isn't there? Well, there is now, you know. 30 years later. But not in 1989. Not in 1989. 1989. The next day, Wayne and Vale have dinner and she spends the night. They fall madly in love and Alfred ships them both hard. Meanwhile, Jack survives the toxic chemicals and goes to a shady surgeon to fix his face. Jack then visits Grissom. Jack says he is dead, that his name now is the Joker, and he kills Grissom. We realize the Joker is a clown. His face is all white. And he has a permanently scarred smile on his face. Uh, <laughs> Later that night, Joker meets the Grissom's capos to tell him that he's the one in charge now. Bruce Wayne goes to Vale after they spend the night together. She's angry and follows him. She watches him place two roses on the ground in a shady neighborhood. What do I? Oh my gosh, that guy ghosted me. Let me just go stalk him real quick. Well, yeah. She goes back to the office and asks Knox to get information about Bruce Wayne. And the alley he was on. Stalker much? That was my question. What do you think? Stalker? Yes. Like, she's like, I want to know about his family. I want to know about everything about him. And I'm going to follow him and take pictures of him all over town. And it's like, he lives with Alfred. And that's it. Like, just leave him alone. He's probably already sad. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I thought that was kind of funny. In front of City Hall, Vinny, one of Grissom's capos, has a press conference that he is now in charge of Grissom's business. The Joker doesn't like this, and he and his goons come and kill Vinny and cause havoc. Bruce Wayne is there, and he sees the Joker and recognizes that his real identity is Jack Napier. I would not be able to tell that. You can tell. I mean, just his face is white, that's all. It looks so different. It is smiley. It's weird. Yeah, everybody didn't notice. I thought it was kind of silly they didn't notice, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it makes sense that you didn't notice. It's like a like a superhero where they like put on the tiny little thin mask that goes only around their eyes, and everyone's like, "Who is that?" Yeah, pretty much. It's funny because now that with COVID and everybody wearing masks, we all recognize each other, even though half our face is covered. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know. I feel like I could probably recognize Joker, but like if his face was all white like that, then I don't think I could. Maybe. The Joker begins his campaign of mayhem by putting Smilex, a chemical that makes you laugh uncontrollably and die, in everybody's cosmetics. People try to find the pattern of where the Smilex might be, but they can't. Is that why Mary Poppins, in Mary Poppins, that guy laughed to death? 
was he on Smilex? Mary Poppins. Who laughs at death at Mary Poppins? Someone was like always grumpy and then a kid told him like a joke at the end and then he laughed till he died. <laughs> I don't remember that part. Am I going insane? <laughs> no, you might be right. I just I haven't I haven't watched Mary Poppins in a long time. I'll have to check it out. I don't remember that part. Anyways, Batman secretly works on how to put a stop to Joker and his Smilex mayhem. The Joker then finds a picture of Vale and sees her oh, work. I remember we went to like a ride, maybe it was Universal or something. Uh-huh. It was like a Batman or like a Joker ride. Okay. And they had like laughing gas, like Smilex. And then, like, it shot out, like, a gas, right? And I was, like, terrified because, obviously, it's not real gas, but it looks like real gas. And you're like, "Ah, I'm going to die now. And it was just, like, mist or something like that? Yeah, but it's, like, looks so real. (laughs) It must have been Universal Studios. I don't think Disneyland would have had that. Well, I'll have to to look back and see if we have any pictures. It was very, very terrifying. There you go. You were scared of the Joker even before watching this movie. And I remember because they were like, and now for laughing gas. And I was like, what's laughing gas? And you're like, it's when you laugh until you die. And I was like, excuse me? No, that's pretty harsh. The Joker then finds a picture of Vale and her work and falls in love. He calls her under the guise of Wayne to meet up with him at a museum for a date. While Vale waits at the museum, she's presented with a gift and inside it is a gas mask. Then the gas is pumped into the museum and everyone passes out. Joker and his goons walk in and destroy all the artwork inside. It's funny, they didn't use Smilex for that. Because nobody died, they just passed out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just used a different gas. I don't know. They just I, got a whole, like, factory of gases. They do, right? He does have a, a whole factory. A little selection. Show it. But they, didn't, they decided not to kill those people, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I would like, be like, what's this for? Oh, well. And then I'd just leave it there because I'd get weirded out. Or, like, I just wouldn't open the gift. Well, she didn't. She opened it, and then she looked around, and everybody was passing out. And she realized it was a gas, and that's when she put it on. Oh, yeah. It looks small, too. Like like a little like a kid's little mask. One, yeah. I <laughs> know. It's tiny. He uses one of those later, though. Or some some of his guards use that same exact kind of kiddish one. I wonder if they sell those for COVID masks, the little cute ones. I feel like I would be nervous it wouldn't fit on someone. That's true. Joker asks Vale to be his personal photographer for the gruesome experiments he is doing. Then Batman comes in and escapes with Vicky Vale. They get into the Batmobile and the chase is on. Eventually they abandon the Batmobile and fight off Joker's goons on foot. Batman is always forgetting about his Batmobile. Yeah, he just uses it and then he leaves it. He, like, doesn't care. Like, when does he go back? Like, he can't go back in the morning to get his car. No, it comes to him, remember? Oh, he, yeah. He did remote control and called it. Afterwards, they get back in the Batmobile, and Batman takes her to the Batcave. So he goes, come to me, Batmobile, and it comes to him. So the Batmobile is the coolest car of all time. I love the Batmobile. Obviously, in the 1966, the old one is cool. But this one was my favorite one, especially when it cocoons. Like, it has, like, the little armor It didn't on. look like a car, though. It just looked like a space shuttle. Yeah, I think so. Maybe it had like a rocket ship in the back or something like that, right? Yeah. Anyways, they take they go to the Batcave. At the Batcave, Batman gives Vale a file with a solution to the Smilex mystery. Then he puts his arm up, and the next thing we see, she wakes up in her apartment. How did he knock her out, Natalie? He used that gas from earlier. He must have, because you noticed he put his arm up, she got scared, and the next thing you know, she wakes up in her room. Wait, doesn't he have that little flower on his chest? Didn't that spray at her? No, that's the Joker. Batman knocks out Vicky Vale. She probably just passed out from fear. No, because he ended up, she had some film on her, in her shirt, and he took it out. Oh. I thought you would be like, this would be one of those moments that you're like, he like must have punched her out. Like, he must have knocked her out. Maybe he did gas, or maybe he did something. But there was a, of some violence that we didn't get to see, so. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't notice it, so maybe it wasn't that big a deal. That morning, Wayne, with a little coaxing from Alfred, goes to Vicky Vale's house to tell her about his dual identity. So there's a couple of scenes in this movie that I look back on and they kill me. He was going to already tell her after falling in love after like two days that his secret is that he's Batman. Right? Batman. Already. And I know and Alfred wanted to tell her like immediately. He just doesn't care. I guess. I mean, he doesn't want anybody else to know. And she's a reporter. I know, she is. 
or like photographer or whatever. But, she's but it doesn't matter. She could literally tell the whole world. That's true. In like a few seconds. Like they get into one fight and she's like, I know who Batman is. Yes, put it on Facebook. No, nah, well, there wasn't Facebook back then. But still, she could have. They are interrupted by the Joker who is furious that Batman has figured out his plan. Bruce talks to Joker and tells him he knows his true identity. The Joker shoots Bruce and leaves. But Bruce is okay because he put a silver platter under his shirt right around his heart. Joker could have shot him anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that platter was only, you know, the size of a plate. So. And he, like, put it in, like, precisely in the moments. You got lucky. Joker seems like a type of person that would have terrible aim, but they would just, like, keep shooting until you die. That's true. Vale figures out that the alley Bruce put the flowers down on is where his parents were murdered. We see a flashback of the murder and find out that Jack is the one who killed Bruce's parents. Oh my gosh, more stalking. More stalking, yeah, more stalking. Joker broadcasts on the TV that he will be out in Gotham that night on a parade float giving away money. He also tells everyone that he will fight Batman one-on-one. Alfred takes Vicky down into the Batcave and she and Bruce talk. Bruce says he has to fight the Joker, and then he leaves. Alfred, what are you doing? You just gave away our secret. And you brought her down to the Batcave. I know, Alfred just doesn't care. Yeah, Alfred doesn't give a rip. Like, secret identity, he doesn't care. Alfred's going to end up leaking the whole thing. I know, just because he likes Vicky Vale a lot. Because, you know, Bruce Wayne's lonely, needs someone to be with. I don't know. Okay, it's crazy. Joker comes out on a parade float with huge float balloons. He throws money to the crowd, and it's a party. But the parade was a trap because he starts deploying Smilex from the balloons killing everyone. Is Smilex also like helium? Like, how are those balloons still floating with, like, <laughs> this question. deadly um, gas inside of it? it? must weigh less than oxygen. or I don't know. It must be, yeah. <laughs> Smilex is part helium, yeah. Batman comes on the Batwing and cuts the ropes to the flow balloons. And they float away, and the danger is over. Joker eventually shoots down the Batwing, making it crash into the ground. With amazing aim. Yeah, he's got amazing aim now, so maybe he's pretty good. He picks up Vicky Vale, takes her hostage, and then starts to climb up the cathedral to get to the roof where a helicopter is waiting for him to escape. Batman comes out of the wreckage and fights his way to the top of the cathedral as well. There he beats up a group of Joker's goons. He gets to the Joker and handles his business, but he and Vicky fall over the side of the building and are hanging by their fingertips. Joker almost gets away, but Batman ties a gargoyle to his feet and the Joker plummets onto the streets of Gotham, where he dies. Well, that's aggressive. Pretty aggressive, yeah. Yeah, there's no way he wasn't killing him, right? Yeah. But it's weird because superheroes are always like, we don't kill people, and then Batman's like, oops. Yeah, and this movie didn't seem like Batman cared about killing people. No, he was, just, the, he was just trying to help. In the Batwing, he was shooting people down, like blowing up uh, floats and stuff. <laughs> yeah, he just didn't care. He was like Alfred. In the final scene, Commissioner Gordon reads a letter from Batman, where he says he will be the city's protector, and they unveil the bat signal. They turn it on, and Batman watches from a rooftop. The end. You know, Nat, like, so this movie came out in 1989. I was 12 years old. I remember this was like the biggest movie of my life at that time. Like it was, I have posters in my room. I had like decorate, my whole room was decorated like Batman. I think I watched it like three times in the movie theater, which wasn't an easy thing to do back then. I remember watching the trailer 350 times. It would come on and I would watch it over and over and over again. I was so excited about that. I collected the, like the trading cards for the movie, which I still have now. I bought, I ended up rebuying them because I lost the original ones. And you got the whole set, though, right? I got the whole set, yeah. I mean, they have pictures of the whole movie. I'll have to show it to you. And I just, I'm so, I look back on it and go, okay, I guess this is a perfect movie for, like, a little 12-year-old boy. But I'm like, I thought you would like it a little bit more because it was kind of silly and fun. But I guess I guess you were bored by it. I guess, I don't know. Boring. Yeah. All right. Could this movie still be made today? Uh, I think so. Well, th- that's it? That's all you got? No. But, like, so the other news guy. Alex Knox? I think so. Uh huh. He, like, comes into the office at first. And then, like, he, like, immediately starts making, like, jokes with 
The girl. Vicky Vale? Vicky Vale. So you didn't do any research here. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Thank you so much for being prepared for the podcast. Go ahead. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. So news guy starts talking to Vicky Vale. Okay. And then, like, the first thing, instead of being like, oh, hi, nice to meet you, he's, like, already trying to make a pass at her. And it's like, can you not just meet someone for the first time? And without trying to, like, pick up on her. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Anything else you think you could be made today? So there was this one time where they were like zip lining. Uh huh. And then he's like, How much do you weigh? And she's like, 108. And then like later he's like, You weren't 108. And everyone's like, Ah ha ha ha. She's not 108. 108 is like extremely light. Why is this like a ha ha? You're, you're too heavy. Well, because she lied about it. <laughs> right? He He didn't care about her weight as much as she lied. So they they took a rappel, like a cord, like a bungee cord, uh-huh. and they both went up and they stuck. They couldn't go up anymore. So he asked her for her weight because there was probably a maximum amount of weight on it. Yeah. And then she lied about her weight and then they couldn't go up. Why would she need to do that, though? Why would she need to lie? Uh-huh. <laughs> Just a good question. I don't know. So what happens is he has to disengage. He could have gotten hurt. He did get hurt. He got beat up. He got knocked out. Remember, he got shot and got knocked out, and then they were able to lift up his mask, and that's how she took a picture of him when the when Joker's goons were fighting this him. This is why, kids, you don't be lying and ashamed about your weight, because Batman can get beat up, and then you are being in trouble. <laughs> there you go. You can cause people to get hurt if you lie about your weight. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't think he was saying, like, oh... But then afterwards, he did kind of throw that jab. Like, it wasn't necessary, right? He's like, yeah. you don't weigh 108, you lied to me, kind of thing. But I think he was just mad because he ended up having to fall 30 feet into the ground and then get beat up by a bunch of Joker's goons. So. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Mm, no. Does it pass the Bechdel test? No. Not at all. All right. Bechdel test is a uh, test to check for female representation in movies. There are three criteria. The first criteria is, are there more than two named female characters in the movie? Or there are two or more? There was Vicky Vale, and then there was the girlfriend. The, the girlfriend. Yeah, Alicia. The, Her name Alicia. Is Alicia. All right, so pass this criteria one. Do, 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 do. We win, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Criteria two. Do the two females talk to each other? No. They're like the same vicinity. <laughs> they end up together in a second where Alicia shows her face that has been mutilated by the Joker. But Alicia doesn't even speak. She doesn't even speak at that point, no. Alicia was just used as like, oh my gosh, she's the the home wrecker. She's the one that's cheating with everyone. Yeah. And then she's like, okay, now she, now she can't speak. She's mutilated. She's going to die now. She's the reason... Carl Grissom wants to kill Jack Napier because he realizes that his wife is cheating with him. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, okay, you're going to kill another man, but your wife also cheated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you think you should have killed her too? Well, if he was going to kill anyone, he should have killed her too. (laughs) Okay. He's a gentleman. He only kills men. I don't know. Whatever. All right. Uh, And so obviously if they didn't talk to each other, they couldn't talk to each other. For the third criteria about anything other than a man. So this is not past it. All right. Well, that wasn't even close to passing it. Anything else you want to talk about before we watch Batman Returns Part 2? Batman and Robin, Batman Forever. We watched the whole series. Oh, yeah. There is a scene where Batman was, like, running up a bunch of stairs, like a giant stairwell. Couldn't he have, like, repelled up the stairs? Like, yeah. They used his little zip line. They had him running up the stairs for dramatic effect. And I was like, you could have just... Phew. Yeah, because later on he uses it. So it's not like he didn't have one. Yeah. Yeah, because he uses it later. It so. was the stupidest scene exactly. I've ever seen. <laughs> There's a few. I mean, of course, it has to be silly. And then the special effects were terrible. Terrible, Oh, my terrible, gosh. Terrible. The CGI when the balloons burst and all the gas came out. Yeah, that was, was pretty bad. Or bad. when they fall off. The, I mean, these. I think it was known for its stylistic approach. Anything else? No. Thank you for tuning in to Poppy Approved Movies. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app. We put out an episode every Monday. Do you want to suggest a movie for us to watch and critique? Email us at poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. That's poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com.
No spaces, no caps. We'll try our best to get to your suggestion. And remember, it has to be PG-13. Next week, we're watching Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. So I hope you join us. I'm Bobby. And I'm Natalie. See you next time. Bye.